Hi everybody, it is Eric Johnson. Today we're going to be doing something that I promised a long time ago and I'm getting around to it. I've already, as usual, I've already done this one time. Now I decided to do another one because I didn't like the first one. Uh, I use an app named Field Nation to get part-time work. You can do as little as you want. You can do as much as you want. Work, that is. It's not freely given. You go online to this app called Field Nation and you bid for jobs. If you get established with companies that are looking for workers to do jobs in your community, they will actually start pushing you jobs that if you're agreeable to the terms of the job, you can just accept it. You don't have to bid against other people. I get those every once in a while. But I've been doing this now for over half a year. I did it back in 15, 16, one or two times. Um, but then I got involved for force then. And also, also, I did this big project with uh, a, a separate company that sent me around the country upgrading uh, registers and software at the AMC theaters before the COVID hit. Um, so I only recently got back into it with uh, Field Nation. Now, I'm going to log into my site. Let's do a couple of things here. First of all, let's just take a real quick look at Field Nation, what it is. It's um, something that was set up by a guy who very brilliantly figured out that businesses in this country were trying to get workers to sites where they have equipment, they have networks set up, they have some sort of structure, some sort of devices, some, sometimes just general tasks need to be done. And these people, of course, are in these headquarters all over the United States. They don't necessarily have an office in your neighborhood. They don't necessarily have an office in your county or even in your state. So what do they do if they need something done? They ask you uh, to take a look at the jobs that they want done around you and you decide whether or not you want to do the job. And if you want to do the job, you bid on the job. And if you get the job, then you go do the job and they pay you through Field Nation. Also, <coughs> I pay on each job a one and a half percent insurance fee for liability to protect me and to protect them. So let's put in uh, Field Nation and see what comes up. This is a very general description. Uh, Field Nation. I know some people don't like Wikipedia but I use it anyway. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> it's hard to test multiple issues. Now I see why people don't like it. Well, let's just get the, just very briefly. In 2004, Field Nation CEO Manol Khan began developing a web-based platform for a single client to manage the outsourcing of their IT work. Um, the platform soon began generating $3 million, $3 million in revenue, and in 2008, Khan uh, launched Field Nation. Um, 2014, they had more than $60 million in revenue. Field Solutions, is that what I used one time? Wow, well, you can read it. In 2015, Field Nation raised $30 million in venture capital led by Susquehanna Growth Equity. I can't talk today. Okay, so that's a general idea, right? You're in your neighborhood, you're in your area, and you want to work. Now, they said IT. IT is a big part of it, but there are many more jobs they've now added to the list of things they're looking to have done. So, what I would like to do is I would like to just show you my profile at the moment, what's going on. I'm actually waiting on a job. So, this would be a very good way of... Um, showing you how this works. First of all, you have to figure out what kind of work you're willing to do. I'm going to take you to types of work. This is what you're willing to do. I am willing to do what happened? Well, that's what it normally says. I do all this work. Um, networking, I pick and choose. I don't want to terminate cable. I don't want to do, you know, 
complicated network, and I don't want to run cable, I don't want to be up in the ceilings and all that crap. So even though I do, I did networking, but I do very fundamental networking. I do all these other things, though. I'll work on audiovisual. I'll work on desktop, laptop. I'll work on a kiosk. I want to do a kiosk job today. Point of sale is your average register at a restaurant or a bank or whatever. Printers, I shy away from. It depends on the printer. Most printers I don't like to work with. I don't. It usually means you're in an office environment with people. I don't like dealing with that. See, you can pick and choose what you do. That's what's so cool about this. Now, I realize some people are saying, well, Eric, I need work every day, all day. You can do that if you want. I will say this, though. If you have average job skills, but you present yourself really well, you're going to do as well, if not better, than the guy who has superior job skills, but presents himself badly. And when I, why I say that is because they have, in some of the descriptions, these companies will have to say things like, you know, watch your language. Um, don't show up intoxicated. I mean, they say this in various ways. Um, you know, uh, dress appropriately. Don't show up in sandals in the summer and sandals and, you know, cut off jeans and a tank top. You know, you're supposed to be a professional. You're kind of working for yourself, but you are representing whatever company is sending you out to do the job for them. So I always present very well. I wear a short sleeve dress shirt, a white shirt. I wear a badge um, if I have one for the occasion. I have kind of a generic badge that I wear that just kind of says, you know, my name and IT IT tech or whatever. Um, I wear a pair of uh, pretty fairly new black jeans because sometimes, you know, you, it's, you, the work can get a little grubby. Uh, so you might end up kneeling on the floor or something, but they're washed and they're black and then I wear a pair of black band tennis shoes and so it presents a fairly professional look considering you're dealing with a, a tech who you know might be scrounging around little under shelves and stuff trying to do stuff especially when it's IT. Um, server hardware software that often just means replacing PCs I mean they call them servers now servers hardware you know maybe taking a router off a rack, putting a new router in. You do a lot of replacement work. You don't you don't configure stuff so much now. And if you do, you're often working with a, a, a remote desk that's helping you do the configuration or they're doing it themselves. Sometimes you're you might be sent to a job site if it's a networking or server work to change an IP address so they can get into the site or something. Things like that. Merchandising is interesting. It's not IT work. Uh, merchandising is, um, you know, when you go into these, uh, you go into your, uh, I mean, I'm giving you an example of something that showed up under merchandising for me. When you go into the movie theaters, they have the big standees that are set up. Right now, West Side Story, they recently had one out uh, that they needed people to set up the West Side Story standees, the big cardboard things you see when you go in the movie theater. That job was $50. So say the theater's 10, 10, 10 miles from your house, you go drive over 10 miles and you make $50. I mean, of course you do the work, you present well. Um, they're always gonna ask the company, how did the person present? You know, did they, were they uh, use appropriate language? Did they do anything that bothered you? And if you get a bad rating, that's why, because you have done something, here comes Tover, because you have done something, hey Tover, he just, he just walks in like, yeah, I'm the king. Okay, just a second. Well, I'm going to leave door open. Screw it. Uh, so that's an example of non-IT work that I saw recently. I didn't go do it. But, um, you know, quite frankly, the standees look kind of complicated. <laughs> and I'm not even kidding. I mean, they're these big, big things. And they, you know, they, you've got to hit in wing nuts and hinges. And you got to put the things in the slots. And there's like three different sections with two sections in each of the three sections and man it's not like the old days <laughs> in the old days it was just you took snow white and you stuck her in the standee and they took the dwarf and stuck him in the standee and that was your standee I, i'm thinking back to my days when i worked in the theater business the general task same kind of thing i did a general task it it was literally me going over to a storage unit 
they gave me all the information I needed to get into, you know, to pass the gate, to get into the unit. They wanted me to take pictures of the unit, what was in it. They were some sort of warehousing company, and they wanted to see what was in the unit they had bought, and I sent them all the pictures. And uh, it didn't, you know, it was very little pay. I'm sure it was uh, probably 40-something dollars take home. But um, it doesn't require IT work. So for those of you that are out there that are want to do that kind of, you're going, I'm not an IT guy. There's work for people that aren't IT guys on here. If, they, if there weren't, I wouldn't have done this video. Um, here's other types of work that I don't do. Automated teller machine, actually those I would like to get into. Uh, I don't do copiers, I don't do fiber cabling, low voltage cabling, pro, you know, blah, blah, structural cabling. Oh, I'm so glad I remembered this. Top three jobs, top three jobs right now for Field Nation are telephone, voice over uh, internet, networking, and point of sale work. Networking, point of sale work, and telephone and voice over uh, IP are the top three uh, jobs. So I'm always working because I do point of sale. And kiosk, actually, quite frankly, is I am finding. I get a lot of desktop work. I mean, IT is the, the, the best work you're going to get. But look at all these other things for people that do other kind of work. Here's entertainment. I don't even know what that would be. Uh, if you're interested, try it out. Appliances, electrical. Do you have just general plumbing skills? In my house, in my condo, I don't do. I don't have plumbers come over unless it's severe. In other words, if the toilet bowl doesn't fill up, I change out that thing in the back of the bowl myself. If um, garbage disposal goes bad, like happened to me one time, I replace the garbage disposal myself. Um, Actually, recently, my refrigerator went on the freezer, went on the freezer, went on the fritz because the evaporator fan in the side that's the refrigerator, the freezer side was fine, but that side that's the refrigerator stopped working. <coughs> I fixed that. Actually, I'm, I'm, I fixed it because I just defrosted the evaporator fan and got it running again, but now I'm waiting for the part to come in because I know sooner or later that fan is going to go bad anyway. So what's my... The point is, I can do... I can do general plumbing work. So, I mean, this is general plumbing work right here. This is not commercial plumbing work, all right? See what, so, if you are able to do DIY around your house, there could be someone somewhere that needs someone to go out and do some minor plumbing work somewhere. Now, I will tell you, some of these jobs, the vast majority of them, 90% of them are commercial. You're going to businesses in, in the work I do. I mean, in, uh, you know, working with registers and working with kiosks and stuff. That's all business stuff, you know. Uh, desktop, laptop, it's usually, off, it's usually offices and like Bojangles. I did a project in Bojangles not too long ago where we upgraded all their back office PCs. Um, but about 10% of it's residential. I do not do residential work. First time I ever tried residential work, I found a lady collapsed on her floor. I had to call an ambulance. That was my that was my introduction to residential work, was finding an 80-year-old woman who was wanting me to come over and look at her computer uh, and having, having a, you know, she was, open the door, it's open. I'm like, are, what? Are you, you're, are you in there? And she's like, help. I ended up, and then I ended up having to go back when she got back from the hospital and convince the guy that sent me out on the job that she needed to just get a new computer instead of us sticking her for another bill for fixing up this old piece of crap. And he wasn't that happy with me. I mean, I got paid for the job, but he was he he would literally own the company and he was talking to me. So that's a bad sign. <laughs> if you're working for someone who is owns the company that's sending you out. You're, you're probably working for a guy working out of his living room. I work for companies primarily that are established companies, NCR, uh, Pivotal. Oh, gosh, there's just so many I can't even tell you. EPC, a bunch of people you don't recognize. But anyway, you can see all these things. Secret shopping, the secret shopping. I used to know a girl many, many years ago who worked for me. I mean, many years ago in the 80s. She did secret shopping. 
And she loved it. She would go out and she would get free meals, free lunches, free dinners. She would pay for the meal and, and keep the receipt, of course, and they would pay her back for the receipt. And then she'd kind of go around and check out the store, the restaurant, check the bathroom, see if it's clean, you know, check this, check this, how did this, how were you served, were you serviced, blah, blah. And I, I, I forget what she made. It was in the 80s. Maybe she made 15 bucks for the trip. But back in those days, what was that? 45 bucks? And um, plus she got a free meal. She loved secret shopping. Adjustable bed bases. Here's one. You're probably going, what is that? You know, hospital beds. Hospital beds or beds for people that are at home or, or, or uh, you know, elderly or sick that are at home with the equivalent of a hospital bed, things like that. There is a market for keeping those beds working properly, both adjusting them and fixing them. It's a big market. I had it checked one time. I must have gotten three or four jobs over a month to go fix hospital beds. But I didn't want to do it. But, you know, um, so I didn't. But I'm just telling you, it's a real niche out there. If you want to do that, in so many of these jobs, now you can go on YouTube and you can see how to do them. In fact, some of the companies give you videos and say, here's how to do the job that we're sending you on. If we give you the job, here's a video how to do it. Some of them, you can even access that before they give you the job to see if you can like the work you're going to do. I'm telling you, folks, Field Nation is super cool. You can see it goes all the way down to project management. Any managers out there that are out of work at the moment or just want some part-time work? Uh, and here's software development. Now, I want to tell you something. I do very part-time work, right? I work maybe once a week, a couple times a week, a few times a month. I mean, it kind of depends on what work I see and if I want to do it. I cherry-pick jobs. I also make sure my skill set level is higher than the job, meaning that if I take an IT job, I don't want it to be too difficult to where I screw up in any way because I want to get a good rating. So I cherry pick, and I cherry pick jobs that are relatively close to home. Okay, so these are the kind of jobs that are out there. You can see that you can, you can check off. You can check them all off. And you'll have hundreds of jobs offered to you all the time if you checked them all off. And some of them, I mean, merchandising, I'm assuming that probably is going to be something like stock. Someone needs some uh, shelves stocked. Go do it. I mean, if you want to and if you need the money, why not? Simple work, sure. Who cares? It's work. I'm, I, and Oh, and so I was going to address the issue of people who need work all the time. So this guy... I met him on a job. I was coming in. He was leaving. And I noticed as he was checking out, he mentioned something about Field Nation. I said, wait a minute. Are you working off Field Nation? Because I never see that. I never run into anybody else doing the kind of work I'm doing. I'm usually working with, if I'm in a restaurant, it's all the employees, right? It's all this. Well, this particular guy, he was leaving. So we kicked around for a couple of minutes. He was, he was full-time living off of Field Nation. He had his phone set up to where it notified him every time a job came in with his parameters. And he would get those jobs during the day, and he would write, you can write into the job offer, you know, and you can say, I'm Eric, I'm 10 miles from that site, I'm leaving a job now, I can be there in an hour. He was getting work doing that, and he said he was doing pretty good, and I have no doubt. So anyway, that's the kind of work you can do right over here. Those are the job. The jobs available to me right now are. Oh, what do we have here? What is that? Swap something. That's in Lexington. That's very close. That's about six miles away. Troubleshoot office. Photo lab PC replacement. Okay. Let me let me do a little something here to show you something. Here's a job for twelve twenty one. I'm going to show you something. This is to replace a SIM card. Everybody knows what a SIM card is, probably. You have a phone and stuff, a little memory chip. <clears throat> so let's look at what they're offering here. Because this is instructional. This is very instructional. It's a tip, if you will. Uh, all right, so some company called Blue Sky IT Partners. I've never worked for them. 
they want someone to replace a SIM card in Sumter. Now, Sumter, you can go down here. Oh, and here's what they're saying. They're saying it's... Now, look at this. See? Alarm bells should be going off. Okay, alarm bells should be going off because look at this. Use common sense. You've replaced a SIM card in your cell phone or maybe on a computer. You know, you take out the old SIM card and you put in the new SIM card. Right? So you look down here and you go, wow, they, they're going to pay me $150 to do it. By the way, I'm looking around the camera at the, at the uh, screen so I can do this. They're going to pay me $150. Honey, I'm going to make $150 bucks today so we can get Christmas presents. Sure, honey. Then wait a minute. Hours, three hours max. Now wait a minute. Estimated labor hours, three hours. You and I know. Well, let's do a little background check on this. You would think we would be thinking to ourselves, that just seems like a lot of hours to replace a SIM card and a lot of money to replace a SIM card. So let's see what this is. Service description. Um, Okay, estimated time. Now, see, something changed under service description. Estimated time to complete work, one hour. This now, see what the rate is? The rate is 50. 50 times 3 equals 150. They think you'll be there for an hour doing this, and you'll make 50 bucks, and that is what you're going to make on this job. <coughs> it looks really good when you first look at it. And there's nothing wrong with making 50 bucks to go replace a SIM card. You're going to be in and out in an hour, right? So that's pretty darn cool. But just remember that, that when you look at jobs, you have to kind of scope them out and see what's going on. Now, this is called a networking job. That's why I have networking checks, so I get jobs like this. This is, I mean, it's going to be, I think a Cradle Point is a, uh, is a router. So they're calling it networking because it's a router, but replacing a SIM card in a router to me is, I don't know, it's technical, I guess it's networking. Let's take a look at what that uh, part is and see, this is what I do with jobs. I check them out to see what I'm actually going to be doing. So I'll put in uh, pace. So they want, they're telling me I'm going to replace a SIM card in this thing. Let's take a look at what it looks like. Let's look at images. Okay. That's a router. Yeah, that's a router. Okay, so I'm going to replace a SIM card in that. That probably means I'm going to be turning it over, maybe taking a little plastic plate off. I'm going to take a little card out, put a little card in. They'll have sent the card ahead. They'll say that. We FedEx this part there. Sometimes they want you to check with the store itself and make sure the part has come in if they give you the job which is fine, no big deal, you just call it and say, do you get a part for me to come out and fix it? Folks, that's very, very easy work. <coughs> that's almost non-tech work. I mean, the average person now knows what a SIM card is and they can go do this. That's what I'm saying. You, could, you may not be in IT and you go, I can go out and turn this over and put a little card in, take a little card out and make $50. Sure you can. So what else about this job? This job is in Sumter. Oh, here we go. Ooh, this job is 56 miles away. That's a 112-mile round trip. 112-mile round trip for me is, I'm going to guess, about 4.5 gallons of gas <clears throat> because of what I get for mileage per gallon. So I'm going to say, um, oh, gosh. I mean, I could charge them 12 bucks for gas. 10 bucks, 12 bucks, 15 bucks, round it up if you want to do that. So see right here, how would I do that? This job is for 1221. That's a few days off at 12 p.m. And it's going to be in Sumter, which is a 112-mile round trip. I might take the job, but first I want a counter offer. I might want to go into expenses. <coughs> I might want to add, sorry, my throat is just killing me. Travel expense, put gas here, put 15 bucks here, 
say the reason for the counter offer is a 112 mile round trip, I say 115 mile round trip, sounds like a good reason as for gas money. If I wanted to do that, then I would just request it and that would be in there as well. It would add that extra money to the amount they're offering. Keep it in mind, you're smart enough because you just figured it out. It's probably going to be a $50 job. If you lived in Sumter, obviously you wouldn't need travel expense, but you'd be making 50 bucks to go do a job. You'd probably be in and out of the business in, uh, in an hour. That's not bad. That's not bad at all. So that's how it works, folks. Now here's something I haven't talked about. Let's go back to work. I'm going to skip recruitments. That's for the businesses. You can adjust how much, how many miles worth of work you will see. <coughs> Excuse me. Oh, I just realized I have water right next to me. Boy, I don't know why. It's such a parched throat. Okay, so I have set it up to uh, 65 miles. I am getting jobs that fit my work descriptions that I'm willing to do for that many miles away from me that I'm willing to travel. And that's how I come up with what jobs are available. I could extend this. Well, you can see how far you can extend it. You can extend it. Or you can extend it for hundreds of miles. Some people. Oh, and here's, here's one for remote work. I don't do remote work. Wow. Why not? Why don't I do remote work? I don't know. I kind of like to get out, to tell you the truth. It gives me something to do. It gets me out of the house, that old saying. Um, and you interact with people, and you meet some pretty cool people, and you kind of get to see how businesses work. I mean, I've been in so many different businesses. Um, I did a project with Walmart not too long ago where I was upgrading. Uh, I think we upgraded, me and another guy upgraded 12 machines. And I think, I mean, I was all back in the back and in the uh, receiving. And, you know, you just get a real feel for how that huge store works. I just find that kind of interesting. Um, and I spent a good, I spent half a day there, which for me is unusual. I like to do jobs that are usually two to three hours. But it was, it was an okay job. But the point is, I got to go in and really kind of get into Walmart in the back because they had to meet management, had to learn your way around the store a little bit, how it works, where they have parts and stuff. So you can set this for hundreds of miles, and you will get a lot of work. If you want to drive, all you got to do is ask them for the gas money. If you don't want to do it, don't want to drive a long, long way from home, don't do it. Cherry pick. This is an opportunity. If you really need money, do what that guy did. Set up your phone. Set in all your jobs that you like to do. If it's IT work, if it's merchandising, if you're willing to do carpentry work, set it up for 100 miles. Carpentry work. I guarantee you'll be getting carpentry work. Not commercial, just regular carpentry work. I mean, commercial places have their own people. There is someone out there that needs a job done in some particular way. I'll, just, I'll give you an example of how simple the work can get. And it was kind of a fun job. Okay, so you set up how far away you want to be. Well, before we go to that job, I was going to... Uh, let me show you something I'm waiting on today, and I'm kind of getting irritated. What time is it? 11.47? Okay, so here's a job under counter. This means I countered. Printer replacement. I don't like doing printers except in certain circumstances and one thing I love to do is replace kiosk printers or point-of-sale register printers you know what I'm talking about if you go into an ATM I mean I'm sorry not an ATM a uh, kiosk and let's say you use Kimi Kimi is a very cool kiosk I've worked on them a number of times they're the ones where you just put your key in and it makes a copy of your key and you pay with your credit card and you get your key made do you know with Kimi and I don't work, I mean, I only work in this capacity for that company because they don't like, another, another, another perfect example. Here's a company that has these kiosks all over the state. And every once in a while that kiosk needs to be serviced or repaired and they need someone to do it. But they don't have an office in Columbia where a bunch of key me guys sit around going, gee, I wonder if we're going to get any work today. 
they just don't have much work. So they need to rely on people out there like you and me who have an app like Field Nation who can take the jobs as they come, run out and do them, learn the business as it, as it were, because Kimi is a very sophisticated kiosk. Let me tell you something they have at Kimi. You set up your account, first of all. You get your key. Let's say you get a, a car key made. You can have that car key, you know, it has a laser inside that runs over. It copies the key you put in it, and then it, there are like, there's a carousel in there that has like 20 key, different types of keys in this rack that they drop down as they go around. Oh, it's so cool. Um, I mean, just, just the person who had to think up all the moving parts to make this thing work. But the point I'm trying to make is that data for your car key, you go travel from South Carolina to Kansas, and you're in Kansas, and son of a gun, uh, you lose your car key. You have a friend take you, or you take a taxi, or somebody over to a key meet kiosk, present your credentials to get into the key meet kiosk credit card probably whatever is what you, I haven't actually ever used one I've had a I've had a number of house keys made because they keep making me make a test keys so I've got about five house keys made but whatever it is probably it's your credit card that has you on file they have a they have the data to recreate your car key so you're in Kansas you lost your car key and they pop you out of car key and you can go on your way and they even have the, they even have a, a fob thing in there it's really a it's a very cool kiosk. Anyway, here's a kiosk work. Okay, it's for today, 1214. It's for 1 p.m. to 6 p.m. I like to work early. I don't like working late at night. Well, I never work late at night. I don't like working late in the evening. I don't even like taking phone calls after 5 p.m., quite frankly, even for my relatives. I mean, I'm serious about this. In the evening, I like to sit back and watch a good movie, watch a good documentary, Whatever the case may be. Hey, honey. Bell's here. But, but the point is, um, so I want to get there at 1 o'clock. So this is what happened. Okay, now it's $85 to go replace a printer. We're talking about when you use a kiosk, you get a receipt, right? You know, you're at a kiosk. It's some little machine set up in the store, and you have a key made. So when the key gets made, you know, meh little piece of paper comes out with your receipt on it, how much you paid and your credit card information and all that. That was amazing. Belle just went through the tripod and got through it. She just like went from here to and you like a little lizard, honey. Oh, you're coming back through it again. Wow. You're a little slim girl when you want to be. Okay, anyway. <clears throat> that printer, to replace this printer, I know for a fact because I've done it once before. He literally opened the kiosk. By the way, I have kiosk key for uh, some kiosk machines. I actually have my own personal key, but sometimes you just call into the company, key me, and they just pop the door remotely. You go in there, and the, the way this printer is, you literally unscrew some screws. You lift it up and off. Take it out. You take the new printer that's been sent ahead by FedEx, by key me, to the store. And, or sometimes they'll send it to your house, actually. And you um, take it, and you go in, and you put it on these hooks again, and you screw it back in, and the printer's back. That was Bell, by the way, of course. And you're done. $85. Not bad. Now, in this particular case, though, it's 26 miles away from me. So I said, I want to have some more money. Now, am I going to get this? Possibly not. Yeah, I asked for $10 in gas, so that'll be a total of $95, and it's about a 50-mile round trip. Not very far. Um, says here I pass kiosk. Yeah, I mean, sometimes you are offered, they will offer you tests to take. They're very commonsensical tests. If you take them, don't let it rattle you that you're taking a test. You could probably, I think you can always take them over again until you get them right. So it's, there's no stress. They're very commonsensical things. These are not, these are not overly complicated jobs. I mean, yes, I've seen jobs at, oh, and by the way, I also asked them something here. Yeah, see, it says one message. I asked them, I said, 
I would like to do this job at 1 p.m. if still available. Thanks, Eric. I'm letting him know because for me it's a it's an hour, it's a half an hour to 40 minute drive, and it's already 12 o'clock. Clock is ticking. And I've told him I want to do it at 1 p.m. So anyway, that's the kind of stuff though. That's the if you can afford to do that. Now I realize again, if you if if you can cherry pick the way I do, being retired, etc., you can do that. And that's cool. If you just want to have a little money for Christmas presents or this or that, or hey, I just want to go out to dinner more than I do. It could be that. If you need a job, if you're not working, you're looking for work and you want something to do to tide you over, that's why I'm so eager to do this for people, to let them know there is this way to get out and make money. I think when you, <clears throat> I have my mind set up to direct deposit into, well, oh, look, let's look at something else. Okay, so you have available. You have routed. Routed means that, and I get routed jobs. Routed means that you have jobs where they push them out to you. They just say, for instance, um, we need a receipt printer in Florence. Well, I wouldn't go to Florence, so that one I wouldn't take. <clears throat> Let's say TV part swap. I don't work on TVs. I just don't. I don't know why. I will tell you why. It's because a couple of times I thought, you know, it's like, go fix a big screen TV. To fix a big screen TV now, you have maybe a motherboard, a, you know, a CPU, motherboard, maybe a kitty board. That's what I call them. Maybe an audio board. That's what you do. You replace a board in one of these big screen TVs. You don't go in and mess with wires. I mean, you disconnect cables, <laughs> you know, and you plug them back in. But you literally are unscrewing board. You know, you take... You, Get in the back of the TV, you take the plate off, uh, you unscrew and take out and unplug the, all the plugs for a little micro board, and you put another new micro board in or an audio card, and you pull, screw it all together, and voila, it turns on. It's not complicated. So you're, it's not like the old days. You're not in there with tubes and I'm, I'm talking about people that are maybe a little kind of, they don't know IT now and they're just kind of like a little, eh, that sounds complicated. It's really not. Some of this IT work any of you can do. And once you start doing it, you can just say, I'm IT. And take it from there. Learn a skill trait. Pick certain jobs and just see how they work out. But don't screw it up. You are competing with other people. As a matter of fact, as a matter of fact, let's look at something right here. See these available jobs? Okay, so see what it says right next to it? Request. See this job right here, counter that I'm countering on? It has nine requests. Nine people want to go out and replace that printer in a kiosk. Um, now, I've worked for this company, EPC, a couple of times, so I'm thinking I could get this job. But the guy that's doing in charge of the jobs, I want to tell you this too. These people that are pushing these jobs out, these dispatchers, these project managers, whatever you want to call them, they're often quite young. This could be their first job. Um, maybe college educated, maybe not. That's not a knock at it in any way. I'm just saying, you're, you're deal what's the word I'm trying to say? You're dealing with sometimes inexperienced people. Now, sometimes you're not. These guys don't always know exactly what they're doing. This job is sitting here. It says it has a window of 1 to 6 today, right? It is now 12 o'clock. And he still has nine people sitting here waiting to see if they're going to do the job. And one of them, Eric Johnson, has said not only does he want to do the job, he wants to do it at 1 o'clock. I have to leave in 20 minutes to get to this job on time. What does that tell me? It tells me these guys are either young and inexperienced or they're not really on the ball or whatever. I don't want to knock them. They give me work and I appreciate it. And some of them are very, very sharp and on the ball. And, and um, sometimes you're dealing with people in Serbia. Sometimes I worked one day with, on a networking issue with someone, a young lady in the uh, Philippines. I still remember her name is Kia. Um, she was just, she and I were having a blast working on this job. It went on and on. Made a lot of money on that job. But they were having a networking issue with this uh, 
Dunkin' Donuts. Dunkin' Donuts. I was there a long time. But imagine her. She's in the Philippines. She's using me to be her hands and eyes and ears in a store in Columbia, South Carolina. <clears throat> we never did fix it. I very rarely don't fix something, but it was she couldn't fix it. It was a networking issue that was out of my hands. So anyway, requested jobs, routed jobs are jobs where they just give them to you. I have none of those at the moment. Counter jobs, this is one where I push back. I said I want $10 worth of gas if I won't do it. If I don't get it, I don't get it. I'm not going to turn around and say, no, I'll do it now for $85. I want $95 because I want the $10. Requested jobs, not at the moment. I had one this morning. <coughs> I had one this morning, came back from doing something. Uh, went out, came back, and it was gone. And they will usually tell you if you lose a job to somebody. Here are the messages. Okay, I can't see. Here are the messages. See up here, notifications. Let's see. Okay, someone approved a work order of mine. That means they're going to pay me for it. Uh, so, ooh, someone else approved. Oh, this is four days ago. These are all four days ago? That uh, something's something's up with that. That's weird. Here's someone routed me a job for possible assignment. Trouble screw troubleshoot a screen issue on a drive through. Someone replace a Veriphone hub. Someone a Bo Bojangle. Someone routed a job to me. The, way, the reason I get so many jobs routed to me is because I've been doing this now for over a half a year and I've really got good ratings. And the reason I have good ratings, as I have said, is because I present well. I dress well. My clothes are clean. I know this sounds basic, folks. Uh, I don't have beer breath. I'm not using bad language. I'm kind of yes, sir, no, sir. I don't overdo it, but I'm doing a job for money for a company. So when I walk in, I'm presenting. I mean, I want to be a, I want, and I'll tell you something that's so important. And this is the good thing about making sure you can do the job you take. When I go to a job, I'm very confident. I'm very confident. I walk in and I'm like, I'm here to fix this. I know what I need to do. You don't have to worry about a thing. Or if they do need to do something, I say, you're going to need to do this. Or at a certain point, sometimes when I've done some businesses, <clears throat> They may be offline for five minutes. You know, and if you're in a restaurant, you try to make sure that you time it so the, the rush is way, way down. And they'll, they'll work those things with you. They'll have you there 4, 10, 45, after 2 o'clock in the afternoon when the, when the traffic for the restaurant is down. There's a whole science to it. But I've been doing it, and I've got a really good rating. So let me show you something else. Um, I think you guys get the point, though. Uh, so you get jobs assigned. I don't have any assigned, or it would say one or two. Uh, jobs pending. My jobs are have all been... Um... <coughs> Excuse me. I kind of find this irritating. Pending means they're approving the job. They're looking at what you did, and they're verifying with the company that you went to that you did it, and they, they were happy with the work. And then your job is completed. So right now I have a bunch of jobs. Okay, someone just a approved a job I did in Blithwood, which is ooh, Blithwood. How far away is that? 16 miles. I went there and did a job. It got approved. Okay, so I made 57.52. That was literally, I went, this is what I did on this job. I went to a tech company. I picked up a Cisco router that was already packed for me. At the uh, purchaser's request or the buyer's request, I took it home. I opened up the box. I took photos of everything in the box. I put the box back together. I took it to FedEx. I sent them all the pictures. I took it to FedEx. And sent it to, well, actually it was UPS. It was UPS because Brainiac walks into the FedEx and he goes, Hey, how you doing? It's having a good day, aren't we? And she goes, uh, This is UPS label. I went, <laughs> Yeah, that was stupid. Hey, buddy, what's up? Tober's here. 
Tober. Tober, 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 Tober. <laughs> Tober knows there's a camera there looking at me so smart. Oh, here, get down, buddy. Okay, so anyway, it was UPS, and that was it. And I made, uh, what I make? 57.52, here I went somewhere, did something for that. Somewhere I went, I replaced a cash drawer. Dude, don't even ask how replacing a cash drawer in a restaurant, I made 106 bucks. I did a POC, POS swap. I don't even know how I agreed to this for $40. That was ridiculous. Here's some jobs I've done. This one, this, <laughs> this noise clip installation really turned into something. I made almost 400 bucks on that. You can see the different things. Oh, but I want to show you this job I was talking, was I talking about it? Here was the project I did for Bojangles, where I just went around to all these Bojangles and I did uh, back office upgrades. Their, we upgraded their computers. Okay, Eric. <clears throat> so where is this? I want to show you this. So you can see I don't do a lot of work. I mean, 924, 923, 92, 930, 1004, 1008. I, I work every few days. Uh, sometimes I don't see work that I want. Oh, here it is. I love this. Okay, I made almost $50, but this was a cool job. It was on the other side of town. I think I asked for gas. It, was, it said unit checks. I go, unit check? Let me see if I asked for gas. Oh, I asked for $5 gas because I had to travel a few miles across town. You know, I like screw them because, you know, quite frankly, when I do these jobs that are close to me, I do other stuff. I stop at the store, I grocery shop. I mean, I'm not going to pretend like I wouldn't have ever gone over there if I hadn't had this job, so I'm going to charge you, you know, a bunch for gas. But sometimes when it's like today, well, I'm only charging 10 bucks for a 50-mile round trip. I don't think it's bad for gas. Here's what it says. General task. Our company has a storage unit that will be used as a small parts warehouse. At this time, I need a quick inspection of inventory inside the unit. Upload photos to work order. And down here, the confidential information, which I have blurred out, gave me the gate code, the unit number, and the lock combination lock so that I could get into the union, unit. And when I got there, I just did what they asked me. I took pictures. I took pictures. Um, I'll, I'll go to the last picture because that was the one where I took the overall view of the unit. You can see how many I took, though. I took far more than they asked for. I always do. These guys are sitting in Chicago, as an example, and they are wanting to look at a unit that they have bought in Columbia, South Carolina. They want to see what's in that unit. You do not have to be IT to do this, correct? You understand what I'm saying about how people can get work doing this? <clears throat> I knew they just wanted to see what was in it. So my last photos show generally what I was doing. So there you go. That was the unit. This turned out to be a unit full of auto door, automobile door assemblages of all varying kinds. Locks. Here's an actual door panel for the inside of the door where, you know, all the things are, you know, um, all these things were just like parts of doors. So for whatever reason, they had bought this um, unit and they wanted to see what was in it. And here is something that I did that I thought, th this is the kind of thing I will do just as, see right here, this was a package that simply said urgent on it. <clears throat> now, I'm very sure at the point that these people have bought this unit, they're well beyond worrying about things that say urgent. But I do things like that just because I like to help out the buyer and say, oh, and I wrote them something like, oh, by the way, there was an urgent package. I'm sure it's past due date. I mean, I'm sure at this point they've already resolved all that kind of stuff. But I like to do a little bit extra stuff there just to get good ratings. And if you get good ratings, you end up you end up like me. 
I'm not bragging, I'm just saying. See over here on the right? Now, a lot of times they will not rate you. My performance, they will not rate you. I mean, it's very common that businesses don't rate you. And quite frankly, they ask you to rate them, and I hardly ever, I used to always put five stars, five stars, five stars, and then I just got tired of doing it. Cause, but you notice the ones where they did rate me are all five stars, except for some fours. Except for some fours. Oh, there's a whole bunch that didn't get rated. This company, yeah, Comworks, this company killed me. They will not give you five stars. They even have a little thing when you do first work for them. He goes, do you want to learn how to make five stars? You know, it's almost like, don't be a four-star guy. Be a five-star guy. Don't be a three-star guy. Be a five-star. And they give you this little list of little kind of, I don't even remember. It was, I'm not knocking the concept, but I'm there to do the work. I present well, I look at it, act professional, and I'm not going to get coffee for the manager to get five stars or whatever. It wasn't that bad, but it was It was like, so, so they will not give me five stars. I'm convinced they will not give anybody five stars. It's kind of funny. So whenever I see four stars, one other company gave me four stars, Datamax. See, I actually remember these things. Because look, everyone else gives me five stars. Com works again, four stars. You can't make it up. Com works again, four stars. And com works again, four stars. Com works again. See, look at that. They will dock give me and Datamax. All my four stars except for Datamax are all com works, and everyone else gives me five stars. And on that note, um, this is a 1099 company. You do pay taxes on the work that you do. Um, <clears throat> Folks, I'm just saying, give it a try if you need money or if you want money. Uh, need money, want money, whatever. Um, if you want something to do, uh, if you if you if you want to keep your hand in, say you're an IT guy and you want to just keep, I mean, because you can take complicated jobs. Don't get me wrong. There are IT jobs. There are network jobs on here. I won't do. I mean, it's like go in, punch cable, terminate cable, run it, all that crap. No. That's not me. And those are, you know, pretty high paying jobs. And you saw the ones that were like software development and project man. God knows the jobs that are out there. I haven't done a lot of them because I have my little particular list of things I do. I am convinced a lot of you are going to find work using this app. And just remember, present well. Don't over tip over your skis or whatever it's called. You know, take jobs you know you can do because those companies will rate you. They do call them up. They do say, how did our representative do? And they'll tell them. And if you did, you know, something bad or stupid, I should say, or you didn't do the job well, it's not going to look good on you. And those ratings are real. They, I mean, you people, I'm sure, out there get... Oh, a very important. I'm so glad I remembered to tell you this. Background checks. <clears throat> I'm sure a couple of you went, ooh. Uh, yeah, they want you to do every 18 months a drug test, and they want you to do a background check for felonies and violent misdemeanors, and those range from the last point you are in the system. So if you commit a crime in 2012, and you get sentenced in 2013, and you get two years of probation till 2014, 2014 is the last time you were in the system. So that 2012 incident, if you go, oh yeah, that's right, I got in that bar fight in 2012 and I was really drunk and stupid, it'll never happen again, but thank God it was 2012 because now it's 2011. Well, how would this work? Uh, yeah, cause, well, let's just see how it would work. Okay, so it's 2021, so you think, I think they go at seven years, sometimes 10 years. But if you got, say for a guy, he got in a fight in a bar and he got busted. So 2012, then he got sentenced in 2013. He did two years, we'll skate, two years of probation. 2014, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21. It could be right at the seven-year mark. But don't think it's 2012. It's going to be the last time you were in the system, the last date 
you're on probation. So think of whatever has happened to you in the past in those terms. When was the last time I was actually still in the system? And of course, we all know about drug tests. Uh, I don't know what the marijuana laws are now with the different states, but companies check that too. And I will tell you this from Manol. Uh, Manol has a thing, the owner, the guy who dreamed this up. He has a uh, thing every quarter. It's called Ask Me Anything. And he takes, he takes calls from people or, or questions from people. And someone asked, how much of a difference does it take to pass uh, the uh, background check and the drug pass the drug test and he said it doubles your work so that helps me get work too because I am passed on both of them so even if you haven't though I would still give it a shot like he said it doubles your work so that doesn't mean you don't ever get work it means you know, you're going to have, you're going to have twice as much chance of getting work if you have both a background and a drug test. But you can, obviously he said doubles work. He didn't say you don't get any work. You can still get work for people that are out there kind of stuck in that horrible conundrum um, of, of having done the time and paid back society, so to speak, and they can't get hired, which is a big problem. And of course, part of that part of that has to do with uh, I'm getting off subject now. It's a whole video in it's, uh, itself, but it has to do with uh, in, you know insurance and uh, hiring companies. They won't hire because if they hire someone that has a record and then they that person repeats the behavior and someone gets hurt or something happens in the company, then they get hit with a negligent hiring lawsuit. This country is so litigious, litigious. Um, folks, I think that's it. I'm going to put a description in my, uh, I'm going to put a link in the description on here for anyone that wants to go to Field Nation. I would say try it out. You got nothing to lose. Um, and hopefully you'll get some work and maybe even have some fun going out and trying different kinds of work. And everyone have a great day.